Dom ain't sugarcoating shit with us. Like, when that's she want that shit, she gonna get that shit. Yeah, yeah. facts, yo. First entry point of the culture is being a fan of the culture. Dominique Maldonado, founder of Hip Hop Showcase, leaders of the New Cool, former manager of Q-Tip, who is currently an A&R consultant and co-manager of Divine Council, began her journey as someone who not only loved music, but had a hunger for knowledge for how creativity was harnessed into art. In other words, a nerd. I actually came here to get a graphic novel that is a continuation of a series that I spent like a good two years of my life reading. This is like my little excursion. I probably come here a few times a week. It's definitely something that gets me feeling creative and being around creativity. And I think that anything that sort of opens your mind up or exposes you really to fandom is a positive thing. To me, what, what nerd or fan culture is, you're really, really going to dig deep because I want to know what people are getting that's not right there on the page. And music is like that, you know, being yeah. a music nerd. I grew up reading Spin, reading Rolling Stone, reading, you know, every magazine I could, like, as a kid. When the internet came, I could actually look up all the shit that I yeah. read about. So. so are you like a, like, you're an imdb -er, I'm going to assume? Like, are you but see, IMDB can be a little, like, <laughs> so that can are. be a little baseline for me, right? Like, you really want to know everything about it, and you really, like, you can, if you can argue about something, like, yeah. really argue about something, you probably are getting to nerd territory. If there's a superhero out here that's you, <laughs> come on, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, okay. <laughs> Dom's analytical approach to creativity led her from wanting to know everything about music and how it was made to beginning to create herself in the form of a music showcase titled Leaders of the New Cool, known for putting a ton of emerging artists on a platform, allowing them to take their talents from URL to IRL. I started to notice that the music that I was listening to was internet artists and, or internet-based artists, and you know, you saw Drake was breaking through at that time and breaking all kinds of barriers. And I think a lot of Lupe's fans were primarily mm. on the internet. Um, even though we had radio songs, that's where fans were like really yeah, I core was, congregating. I was like in the forums finding artists and it's around like 08, 09 time. Right. Do blogs, right. Um, yeah, like all of that was before social media. It was more like, okay, I love those artists. I know that there's another crop of artists that are trying to come up that are going through these very same channels and maybe I'd like to see a show with them or maybe people will go see them. Leaders of the New Cool grew into its own musical institution, it helped to put eyes on new talent, many of whom are still in the mix today, and some have risen to stardom in their own right, like Drum, Action Bronson, and Chance the Rapper. Additionally, it served as a community for other like-minded individuals, fostering a new class of consumers and creators. But it definitely wasn't easy. And I think about like those early days, it's unproven to the promoter, to like venue owners, unproven to the audience for some people. These guys aren't on the radio. Where are you at as a person that says, I'm gonna take this risk? I'm not gonna lie, like sometimes you lose a lot of money or a lot of time or a lot of, and, and it's inherently a lot of energy because you care about this or you yeah. wouldn't be doing it. It's not just like a business move to you. It's like, I really care about these artists. I'm really, on a mission to present them and all of that. So it's just, it can be very depleting, but again, it's like just knowing that there's something that's happening and it's obvious to you and probably obvious to a lot of my peers. I think that when you kind of just have an idea that means so much and that you really feel like it can work, you'll keep pushing it up against whatever. Because what I want to see is, you know, a group of artists that have their own following, their own right, or they're just breaking through. I want to see them almost, not competing, but, you know, holding their own on the same stage. That's the concept. <laughs> like, maybe, maybe you'll put someone last because they do have the most buzz at that time, but maybe I'm the most excited about the fourth person on the flyer, like Chance the Rapper. Like, he was on an amazing show with... 2-9, or even like when Iggy Azalea and Action Bronson were on a show, but I was really excited about 
Mr. Motherfucking Esquire on that show. So it's like you just never, never really know. You're finding the artists that end up becoming the mainstream artists end up becoming the ones that can reach, you know, a you in Orlando back in the day, right? Mm -hmm. Like, is that the measure of success or is it just that evening, you know, just having like that high of like everything going according to plan? How do you figure out what, what's I'll valuable? be totally honest. It is totally because I want to see them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like I can, I can lie to you and say that there's, the, their, and I've actually come to accept that. I think when I would sell the whole idea in the past, it was like, yeah, you can, you know, we're helping establish these artists and blah, 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 blah. And like, I actually had to get down to the core of it and say, well, what am I getting out of this? Because obviously the financial side is so inconsistent. I really just wanted to see these artists. And to me, it just helped me understand personally what is going on. Like. I want to see what a person's face looks like when they're listening to this artist versus that artist. It could be the same intensity, but a different type of reaction. Like, it's just more of, you know, creating my own next experience. And with that, I want to see a hood artist. And with that, I want to see a backpacker who's just rapping his ass off because I love that too. Or I want to see like a flashy pop artist with a crazy single. I want to see all of those things. So hopefully someone else wants to see it too. Is that the first time you acknowledged your ability to discover talent? Or is that the first like uh, tangible version of it? It's the first tangible version because just like I think we all, <laughs> you know, sit at home. I knew that song was going to oh, be yeah, a hit. Yeah. Or, you know, you argue with your friends or you... Um, you're like, I told you that, you know, 70s inflected soul samples would come back. Like, yeah. you, you know, we all have those conversations all the time, especially if you're a music fan who has other, fan, uh, other friends that are music fans. Dominique took her passion and taste to another level when she began to manage acts, one of which was the legendary Q-Tip. Dom now co-manages rap collective Divine Council. I was curious why she made the move to management. I mean, I think it's it's my level of creativity. You know, when you're so interested in music and you hear all these things happening, but you're trying to find what your place is, and I'm not, I don't play an instrument. I don't know how to, you know, use any production equipment right now. You know, I'm a terrible songwriter, at least I was, <laughs> you know, and, and when you don't have those abilities, but you still have a strong interest and I think taste and um, and you've, again, read a lot, like you've seen career trajectories and find that whole thing fascinating. Yeah. So I love learning about, you know, the early days of an artist and how they move through their career and the people that were involved in that. So I think that's where it comes from, wanting to kind of be a part of a story like that. And that's like my little, my little place, hopefully, you know? Um, when looking at uh, Divine Council, what was the thing that you were like, I like those guys? Those guys. <laughs> yeah, we was doing shows in Richmond, and then we, our first show outside of Richmond was in New York, and that was through Dom, so she just like really put that together One of the greatest us. experiences of that whole time. Hell yeah, the whole bro. Time, for real. Definitely. A couple weeks after that, she had called all of us. We was already talking about like making them our mm -hmm. manager and shit, and they mm -hmm. just randomly called us and was like, yo, trying to manage y'all. Let's do it. Da, da, da. We got a conference call and shit. Yeah. In the beginning, like Chris and Don, it was like, they just wanted to do it off of the strength of yeah. just fucking with us. Like, it was all love. It was all love. Really it, love. It, it, was, it, was in, it wasn't a business thing. It was just like, they they wanted to see us be great. No, so really. If music, it was G, no, it was yeah. real. It was, we had shit else but the music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all we had. We wasn't clouded up. We didn't have no crazy features, no still really crazy. Crib. Yeah, yeah we were still at our yeah. crib. <laughs> Broke as fuck. It's crazy Robbing niggas to smoke weed and first all that shit. We got there, really anything we asked for, it was there. Do you remember the first thing she said to you in person? She was like, um, the first thing she said to us was, uh, I'm gonna go get my hair done right quick. You guys <laughs> wait at the hotel and I'll be and she right got us back. A pizza. Hell yeah, she yeah, got yeah. us a piece. And she was good. And as she fuck. bought us a piece. Yeah. Yeah. Not that she was all right. The cross it was, was, the okay cross was burning. Yeah, the, the, the cross was burning. The cross was burning as a motherfucker. Was type, so I imagine you guys run into a lot of people in business, and there's probably other people that may have approached you all. What do you think sets Dom apart? 
Dom is real. Like Dom, Dom ain't sugarcoating shit with us. Like when that's, she want that shit, she gonna get that shit. Yeah, facts, yo. Her words, like, Dom, her words are very, are very really uncut. Fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, well, what I love about Divine Council is that I think there's a real honesty there in the music that appeals to me. What I perceive from them that I think a lot of others can attach to is they're like young guys with a dream and it's so tangible when I listen to them like I hear that and I think that a lot of other people would respond to that too or or feel it in that way it's been so cool working with them because and working with young talent in general and I will also say this comes from you know producing the shows like you get to see this world that we get kind of jaded about sometimes you know like seeing things through their eyes is just like how people say, oh, with, with a child, you see the world differently. Like, I have the opportunity to do that, like, over and over, so. I like riding now. I like wilding now. I like doing things. I like smoking out the house. Dom really wants to make sure that the project gets to where it needs to be and everybody's doing the best they can and that no one's wasting any time and everybody is kind of... I want to say collaborating as much as they can. Dom has morphed her fandom of music into a long-lasting, ever-evolving career. Observing and practicing creativity across various iterations have given her unique perspective and earned her a definitive vantage point on artistry. Dom's most consistent thread is being a fan and helping to create art that is authentic. You've seen artistry at so many different levels, right? Like whether it was kind of being a fan and seeing artistry, artistry as it lands on your radio, um, giving a platform to emerging artists, working with, you know, huge artists like Q-Tip, and then now also Divine Council, where you're kind of like, you know, building these young dudes. Um, what's the consistent thread that you would share with other artists about some of these figures you've seen, like figures that you think are either going to be successful or have been successful? Yeah, I think the, the common thread among everything that I've either admired or wanted to work with was honesty and originality. Um, and honesty could just mean painting a picture of what your life is really like. I think about like old Scarface records or Danny Brown or, you know, Q-Tip, like the old tribe music and then even into the new tribe music and even into his solo records. Like he's just one of the most honest artists that we've ever had. And um, I think that that's what people most connect to in any genre, so I'm always gonna look for that first. And it's always the thing that makes me feel a little bit deeper of a connection if I can sense that honesty. And it's like unfakeable. I was rocking with Pokemon. Um, I had the cards but did not know how to play. But it was just a matter of like, no one did. It was just sort of like a, right? And dealing. Yo, this was though, no joke. light up synergy gym earrings, what? I think I'm gonna pass on those.